We continue now at the top of Daf Mem Amad Aleph and Maseches Gitten. This is Gitten Daf 40a. The Gemara continues a statement of Rabbi Zeir that is ultimately in the name of Rebbe. Rebbe says if an Evid marries a Baschor in front of his master, Yotzel Lecheres, he's going to go free. Rashi says, Yotzel Lecheres, the Lav, the Shichere, Lo Havashavik Leid, Lamins of Baschor. And if not for the fact that he freed him, he would not have allowed him to, to marry a Baschor. Amr le Rabbi Yochanan, so Rabbi Yochanan said to him, meaning Rabbi Yochanan said to Rabbi Zeira, Kol kach yesh b'yodcha, you have so much, such an extreme halacha in the name of Rebbe. V'ani shona, but I've learned as follows. Hakosev shtar erisin l'shivcha, so let's say somebody writes a shtar erisin, a document of betrothal for his shivcha, meaning he's trying to marry his shivcha. Rabbi Meir omer mekudesh, as Rabbi Meir says, the betrothal works, there is a kedushin. And the Chachamim say, there is no Kiddushan in this situation. Now in this case over here, when the Master himself is marrying the Shifcha, so certainly that should be an indication that this Shifcha must have been sent free. And yet the Chachamim say, we don't say that the Shifcha is free, and we don't say that it's a good Kiddushan. And so essentially Rabbi Yochanan is asking Rabbi Zeira, certainly in a situation where the Evid marries some other Bas Chorin, in that situation that should not be an indication just because it's in front of the Master, that should not be an indication that the Evid was set free. So the Gemara answers, It's like Rabbi Bar Shila said in another context, He talked about a case where the Master put Tefillin onto the Evid. Hachanami here also, that's the situation. Kesherabo he siu isha. The case over here is that it's not simply that he married a Baschorn in front of the master, but the master actually married him off to this woman. And so therefore, since the master was participating directly, that's what Rabbi Zeir was quoting ultimately from Rabbi, that shows that he had freed the Evid. But the Gemara still asks, Umika midi de la lo mi le isura. The iu avid isura doesn't make sense that you have a situation that a person will not conduct an isur with his with his evid, but he himself is willing to do such an isur. Meaning to say, it's still really a contradiction. We're saying that in a situation where a master marries his evid off to a baschorin, that indicates that he certainly freed the evid because he wouldn't commit an isur and allow the evid to marry a baschorin like that. However, where he himself tries to marry in such a situation, his shifcha, meaning the master himself wants to marry the shifcha. So there we say it's possible that he had not already freed the shifcha, and it's not really a good kedushin. That doesn't make sense. Why would he not be willing to marry the Evid to a baschorin? That's a violation. But he himself is willing to marry the shifcha. That doesn't make any sense. And the Gemara answers, Amr Rav Nachman, Rav Yitzchak, Rav Nachman, Rav Yitzchak says, Hacham Ayaskin, and here what are we talking about? Do you Amr Lot, Si'i Bo, V'Eskad Shibo? This machlokus that we had between Rabbi Meir and the Chachamim about Mekudeshes, Reina Mekudeshes, the case was not, we weren't asking whether it's an indication that he had freed the Shifcha. The case is that he's giving her the document, he wants that to also be her Shtar Shikhra. This document, this Shtar Eresin that I'm giving, should also be a Shtar Shikhra. And that's the machlokus of Rabbi Meir and the Chacham. It has nothing to do with whether something serves as an indication that an Evid has already been freed. Rabbi Meir Savar Yesh Beloshan Azeloshan Shechra. Rabbi Meir says that kind of language is also a language of freeing the slave. For Rabbon and Savri in Beloshan Azeloshan Shechra. But the Rabbon and say no, you give a, a language of Kiddushan to a Shechra is not also, does not also serve as a language of freeing her. And Rashi explains, Kol kach yesh b'yodcha, again, Rav Yochanan said to Rav Zeri, you have so much mishmei de Rebbe, you've learned such an extreme halacha from Rebbe, v'ani shonev, ha'chacham amr e'nem mekudashas, but I have a halacha, that the chachamim say it's not a good kiddush, and again, when the master himself is trying to marry the shifcha, shtar erisin harayad mekudashas li v'kitshavo, again, he gives her shtar erisin, he gives her a kiddush, and Rashi continues, the Rabba bar Rav Shila lekamon, the statement of Rabba bar Rav Shila in reference to Tefillin is going to come up later on. He's Sio Isha, so then the Gemara answered over here also, he's marrying her off to this Baschorin, the Lav, the Shechrei Lav, and Mi'avid Isur al Yodo. If not for the fact that he freed the Evid, he wouldn't have caused the Evid to do this sister of marrying a Baschorin. It must be that the Evid was freed. But then the Gemara asked, Viyu Avid Isur, but he himself is willing to do the Isur. He himself is willing to be Makadish a Shechrei, even though she's not free. Shanose a Shechrei, so he's willing to marry a Shechrei. And the Gemara ultimately he answered, Si'ibo v'hiskanshibo. The case over there, the machlokus was, he wants her to go free with the Kiddushin. Kilomer idom v'hiskanshibo greida. If he had just said, marry me, let's have a Kiddushin, v'adai shechra meikara. That certainly would be evidence that he freed her from before that. Aval hashda damar lot si'ibo v'hiskanshibo v'ze yiyeh loch shtar shechra. Here he's saying, this is the Kiddushin and this will also be the shtar shechra u shtar erisin. It's going to be the shtar shechra and the shtar erisin together. Goli milse delo shechra. That shows that he has not freed her already. Ela bahai, he's trying to free her with this document, the Shtar Erisin. Rabbi Meir Savar, Yesh Beloshan Hareya Mekudesh Asli, Loshan Shechra. Rabbi Meir says that the language of Hareya Mekudesh Asli includes a language.
language of freedom. And what he's really saying is, You should be fit for Kiddushin, meaning I'm freeing you, and this should be Kiddushin. And that's why Rabbi Meir says that the Kiddushin is effective, and the Chachamim say, no, the, the Kiddushin is not effective. And the Gemara continues, Amr Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi says, Eved sheiniach tefillin b'fnei Rabbuf, and Eved puts on tefillin in front of his master, Yotzel Echers, in that case he goes free. Rashi says, sheiniach tefillin b'fnei Rabbuf, ain't derech Eved lo niach tefillin, it's not normal for an Eved to wear tefillin, the mitzvah sasei shazman gramahi, it's a mitzvah sasei shazman gramah, the lila lav zman tefillin, who, it's zman gramah because you don't put on tefillin at night, it's only during the daytime, so it is it is a time-bound positive commandment, and just like women in Eved is not chayev, it mitzvah sasei shazman gramah, so if he does put on tefillin, he goes free. That indicates that he's actually a free man. And the Gemara continues, Meisve, we have a question from the following, Brysa, love a menu rabu, let's say his master borrows from him, Osha so rabu apetropis, or let's say his master makes him an apetropis, a caretaker over his property, it seems like he may have freed him, Osha inyech tefillin bifnei rabu, or he puts on tefillin in front of his master, Osha kara shlosha psukim in beis hakanesis bifnei rabu, or he reads three psukim in the shul before his master, hareze lo yatsa lecheres, in all of these cases, he doesn't go free, it is not considered an indication that he has been freed. And so therefore, this seems to be a question on Rabbi Yosho ben Levi. It says explicitly, if he put on tefillin in front of his master, he does not go free. And the Gemara answers, Amar Rabba bar Rav Shila, Rabba bar Rav Shila says, Kisharavo he niachlo tefillin, this is what we quoted earlier, when we say that he goes free, that's if his master actually puts the tefillin on him. In that situation, that is an indication that he is actually free. And the Gemara continues, Kiyosa Rav Dimi Amar Rav Yochanan, when Rav Dimi came, when, when Rav Dimi came, he said that Rav Yochanan said, Misha Amar Bishas Misa, so if somebody says, at the time of his death, Polonis Shifchasi Al Yishtab Dubo Lachar Mosi, so and so my Shifcha, that she should no longer be enslaved after I die, Kofen Es HaYorshem V'chos Venlo Get Shechor. So we force the inheritors, we force the Yorshem to write for a get shikhr, a document that will set her free. And the Gemara continues, Amru Lafan of Rabbi Ami Rabbi Asi, so Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, they said in front of Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi, our Rabbi, don't you admit that her children remain slaves? And Rashi explains, Amru Lafan of Lufnei Rabbi Yochanan, they said before Rabbi Yochanan, when this master said that she should no longer be enslaved after my death, he didn't mean to free her. It was an idea that he's making her ownerless. It just meant that they shouldn't overburden her with too much work as a slave. But if she has children, those children certainly will be slaves. So why should we force the why should we force these Yarshim to free her? Now they're gonna lose out on the children. In other words, the point over here of the master was not that she should be freed. The point was just that she shouldn't be enslaved. She shouldn't actually have to do work, but she still should be under the ownership of the Yarshim, and they're still entitled to have her children as Avodim. And so that was the question that Rabbi Ami and Rabbi Asi, they asked Rabbi Yochanan. And the Gemara continues, Ki Yosser Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, when Rav Shmuel Bar Yehuda came, he said that Rabbi Yochanan said, he reported Rabbi Yochanan's statement in a different fashion. The statement was as follows, Misha Amar Bishas Misasu, if someone said at the time of his death, Polonis Shivchasi Koras Ruach, Ostoli, so and so is my Shivcha, she did good things for me, Yasala Koras Ruach, so good should be done for her as well, Kofen Es HaYarshim V'Yosin Lo Koras Ruach, so we do force, we force the Yarshim, we force their inheritors to do good for her. My time and what's the reason mitzvah l'kayim divrei ames because it's a mitzvah to fulfill the words of the individual who died. And Rashi explains, Hachi Garcinon, Kiyosar of Shmuel, Velo Garcinon, Ella, don't have Ella over here. This is not a revision. Rather, Upolagad Ravdimi. Rather, this is arguing on Ravdimi's report of what Rav Yochanan said. Vyamar lo kacham Rav Yochanan ala kacham. What the Gemara is saying, Rav Yochanan didn't say what you said he said. Rather, what Rav Yochanan actually said was as follows. Vyosan la koras ruach. said, do for her koras ruach, meaning vimein ruchan eskara below shikra yeshach ruach. What he's really saying is, if she's only satisfied by going free, then you should let her go free. That was actually the statement of Rabbi Yochanan. If the person made the statement in that way, so that indicates that the Yarshim do have to let her go free, if that's what will satisfy her. And the reason again is, because mitzvah l'kayim divri ames. And the Gemara continues, Amar Amemar Amemar says, Hamafkir Avdu, if somebody makes his Evid ownerless, 
Oh, so Evid ain't lo takana. That Evid, that slave, there is no solution. And Rashi explains ain't lo takana. What this means to say is vafilo bishtar. What Amemer is actually saying is even if you then give a document to the Evid to free the Evid, there really is no solution. The document will not be effective and the Evid will have no solution. He won't be able to marry a Baschorin and he won't be able to marry a Shifcha. And the Gemara says, my time, what's the reason for this? Guve lo kanila. He doesn't own him in terms of his body. There's no monetary possession of the Evid at this point in time because he's already been mafkar the Evid. And he's suruhu de ika gabe. All that there is over here is an Isser. There is an ownership in terms of Isser that the Evid is considered an Evid and cannot marry Baschorin. But the Isser, he's not able to give it over to him. Giving over the Shtar is not effective anymore since he has no more monetary control over the Evid. But the Gemara continues, Amar le Ravashi li Amemer. So Ravashi said to Amemer, Va Amar Ula Amar Rav Yochanan, but didn't Ula say that Rav Yochanan said? Rav Chia Bar Avin, Amar Rav, and also Rav Chia Bar Avin said that Rav said, Echod Zev, Yechod Zev, that in both this case and that case, the cases over there they were discussing where if someone was Makdish the Evid or someone was Mafgir the Evid, the halacha was, Yotza Lecheris, he goes free, Vitzarach Get Shechor, and he requires a Get Shechor. So on the contrary, it sounds like from what we quoted earlier, that the Evid does go free, and then he requires, you could give him a Get Shechor, and that, that takes care of the Isser component. And the Gemara says, Amar Leh, he said back to him, no, what that meant to say was, Tzarech, he needs a Get Shechor, however, Vein Lo Takana, there is no solution, because he can't give a Get Shechor if he's no longer the owner, and that's why the Evid over here is stuck without a solution. And the Gemara continues, Ika Diyamri, there are some that have a different version of what happened with Amemar. Amar Amemar Amemar said, Hamafkir Avdo Vames, that if a person is Mafkir is Evid, and then he dies, so it's not simply a case of Mafkir Avdo, but it's a case of mafkir avdo vames that the owner then dies. Also, oh, evid ain lo takana. Then the evid has no solution. My time and what's the reason? Gufe lo kanile. He has he does not acquire his body. He has no monetary possession. And isura hu de ika kabe. But there is an iser over here. The isura levre lo moris. But that iser it cannot be inherited by the son. The sons the inheritors can't take it over. And therefore, there's no solution in terms of the iser. Amr le Ravashi li Amemer, so Ravashi said to Amemer in this version, Vakiyasa Ravdimi Amr Rav Yochanan, but, but Ravdim, when Ravdimi came, he said that Rav Yochanan said, and that refers again to the Gemara earlier where Ravdimi came and said that Rav Yochanan said, Misha Amr Bishas Misa, so Plonish Shifchasi Al Yishtabdu Bal Achar Mosi, that after I die, she should no longer be a slave. And it said over there, Kofen Asa Yarshem Vechosven Lo Get Shechor, that the Yarshem are able to write for and give to her a Get Shechor. And so that indicates that the Yarshem are able to take care of the Isra over here. That's the question from what Ravdimi said. And the Gemara answers, the Ravdimi to Usahi. What Ravdimi said was a mistake. Amar lay, but he said to him, "My ta'usa." But what was the mistake? The lo amr belashon shechur, as Rabbi Yami and Rabbi Asi said above. The mistake was that the master never said anything about freeing her. The master just said not to work her. But still, ha amr belashon shechur hachinami. But it sounds like if the master said to free her, then ain't hachinami. Really, the yarshim would be able to give the document. And so you see again, not like what we just said. We see over here that the iser is able to be inherited by the son. And the Gemara says, Amar Lay said to him, Ano kid Rav Shmuel bar Yehuda severely. I hold like what Rav Shmuel bar Yehuda said in the name of Rav Yochanan. I don't hold at all of what Rav Dimi said in the name of Rav Yochanan. And Rashi explains, Vakiyasa Rav Dimi v'chulu. Again, the Gemara asks from Rav Dimi's report in the name of Rav Yochanan. The cave on Damar al Yishtabdu. Again, the case over there was the master said not to work her. Paka le mamona mina. So he has no monetary claim over her. The Kamar Yarshin kos la get shechur. And what did it say over there that the Yarshim are able to write the get shechur? You see that they do inherit in terms of the Isser, and they're able to remove the Isser through a get shechur. And the Gemara says to Usi, well, we said above that that was a mistake. Had Amrin lael to who loads siva l'shachra. We said earlier, Rabbi Amin Rabbi said there was no instruction to free her. The instruction was not to work her. But the Gemara says uparchina. But then we ask. Ask my ta'usa de Revdimi. What was the mistake of Revdimi? To lo amar ha'av veloshen shichur. It's just that the father didn't say anything about freeing her. Ha'amar hareat baschor. But had the father said to free her, lo ave kapti Rabbi Ami v'Rabasi. Allah Rabbi Ami and Rabasi would not have argued. And again, it seems like the Yarshim would be able to give the star. And the Gemara ultimately answers, Krev Shmuel bar Yehuda severely. I hold like what Rav Shmuel bar Yehuda said in the name of Rav Yochanan. Do Amar lo Amar Rav Yochanan Kain. Rav Shmuel bar Yehuda said Rav Yochanan never said that which was reported by Rav Dimi. V'lo Amar lo Rav Ami Rav Rabasi. There was never this conversation back from Rav Ami and Rav Asi to Rav Yochanan Kain. They didn't respond in that fashion because he never said it. V'kevan de Kamar Yasa la Korasurach. And since what Rav Yochanan actually said was that the master said to do for her Korasurach, Solo Mona Koach Hayarshim Imena. Just Saying the phrase Koras Ruach certainly does not take the strength away from the Yarshim to give her a document. Ella Behantola, he's making it all 
dependent on them, and in that case, of course, the Yarshim would be able to give her a document that frees her. And the Gemara continues, Ahu discarded the Avdi this Daven Lovet Kochavim. There was a city of slaves, meaning they were slaves owned by Jews, and all of those slaves were sold to Ovet Kochavim, they were sold to non Jews. Kalamar Vasabasrai, the last owners, the last non Jews died. Asulakame de Ravina. So these slaves came before Ravina, and they wanted to be mutter to marry Jewish women. Amar Louis said to them, Zilo Ahadru Avnemar Vasakamai, go to your original owners, the children of your original Jewish owners, Vihtuvulhu Gita de Khirusil, and they'll write for you documents to set you free, and then once you have those documents, you'll be able to marry Jewish women. Amrulay Rabban al Ravina, the Rabban said to Ravina, Vamara Maymar, but didn't Amaymar say, Hamafkir Avdova Mes, if somebody's Mafkir is evident dies, oh so evident lo takana, that evident has no takana, and this should be the equivalent. Here they've been sold to non Jews, it's the same thing as being Mafkir the Avodim, they have no ownership, then they die, so now their sons are not able to give it, get Shechur in that case. And the Gemara says, Amar Louis said to them, I hold like Revdimi, the same Revdimi we quoted above, that even in that situation, the Yarshim do have the ability to give the Get Shechor. And similar to what the Gemara said above, Amru Le, they said to him, Revdimi to Usahi, isn't Revdimi a mistake? Amar Louis said to them, My to Usa, what was the mistake of Revdimi? To Lo Amr Belash and Shechor, it was just that the master never really said to free them, the master just meant not to work the maidservant. Ha Amr Belash and Shechor, but if there would have been a language of freeing, Ha Chanami, so indeed it would have been correct what Revdimi said, and the Yarshim would have the ability to give the Get Shechor, and so therefore that's what I'm holding as well, that it is possible for the, those who inherit to give the Get Shechor in this case. And the Gemara says, The halacha is like Ravina, that it is possible to give a get shechor in this situation. And the Gemara continues, There was an evad that belonged to two people. So one of the two owners freed his half. Amar Idach, so the other owner said, Hashda Shami bi Rabbanan, Umafsu do lay minoi, when the Rabbanan hear about this, they're going to force me to free my half as well. That's the halacha, as Rashi says, Kedamin Masnisin, Kofen es Rabba, we force the other master, Vaoso so ben Choran, and we force him to make him a free man. And so he was worried that he would now lose out on his evid. Again, he said, Amar Idach, Hashda Shami bi Rabbanan, Umafsu do lay minoi, the Rabbanan will hear and they'll make me lose, I'm going to lose out on this evid. So what did he do? Azal Akni of no cotton. So he went Went and he gave over to the Evet, he gave over he gave over the Evet to his son, who was a minor, and in general Bezin will not force a minor to do something. Shalcha Rav Yosef braid the Rava Lakami de Rapapa, Rav Yosef braid the Rava sent him in front of Rapapa, Shalach lay and he sent him the following. Like he did, that's what should be done to him. He should pay back according to what he did. Meaning to say as follows, what he did was not appropriate to try to get out of it by giving to his, his minor son. Instead, what we will do, what we will respond is as follows. We know about children, that they like, they like coins, they like money. So let's set up a caretaker. And Rashi explains, Mukminan Apitrapis Lianuka set up a caretaker for the child, Livro Lo Damim Yafim, to pick for him a good portion, a good money, Kamahunisham Bashuk, meaning to say, how much is this Evid worth in the marketplace? Sharait Saracha Evid Lichtov Shtara Chatsi Damav, because the Evid is going to write a star, he's going to write a document on this half of his value, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Mem Amid Base.